Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming back at you. Got my, uh, what do you call it there, CDI 12 volt conversion thing that we're doing. Let's see if we can get some of the stuff in the picture here. Let's shrink it down. No, I need a new camera, man. I got it, definitely. There we go. Alright, so, um, I've soldered some of the wires and... There's my soldering iron right here that I use. You don't have to use one extravagant. You can use just one of these right here. It'll be just fine for this. Um, like I said, it, it's one of those. I did the soldering pre, prior to this. My camera is on an Apple phone. There's no pause. And I download the app and that doesn't work. And I, I need a new ca I need a camera, an actual camera. So I'm hoping I can get like a GoPro or something that can actually pause and do that and then it's just tedious doing all the stuff on camera to show you guys and what do you call it there i can just explain it to you and save you this long drawn out boring god awful video you know what i mean all right so i'm gonna show you where i left off um yesterday we got the uh we got the um the, the coil mounted right here. We got the uh, thing all machined out. I soldered the two wires. I already got the blue, the uh, yellow wire with the red stripe connected to the yellow wire that we painted with the one that we painted red. And these are those little sleeves I told you to save off the other one. Okay. So after you solder it, you simply just push it right over. Just like that. And then collapse it down. Tuck it down nice and tight like that. I'm using a zip tie. This is just going to hold everything in a nice, neat little, um, what do you call it there? Tight little fashion here. Nothing moves, nothing grooves, right? Okay. Just like that. I just like things nice and tidy and out of the way. So a zip tie actually works really well for this. Alright. Take the side cutters here. Snip that off. And all the wiring is done. See right there, there's the yellow tubes that we took off the other, um, off the charging that we, remember these slipped over here. We pulled them back, unsawed it, and I put those in the pill bottle. That's where they go. That's where you're going to utilize those two sleeves. But these are these are not heat shrink tubes. They're insulator tubes. So they're like a, a fabric that is non-conductive. And uh, you slide that over them, and that protects it. Make sure your screw is back in its place to your clamp and your ignition ground. Um, always make sure it's nice and tight. Oh, that's not a good screw job for that. Um, actually have that in the other room. Yep, alright. I'll tighten up that screw after. Pull that away. And that concludes, after you solder those two wires, you're just taking the, yellow, the yellow, white wire and matching it with the yellow wire. And you're taking the yellow and red with the uh, yellow and red that we made from the harness. And it's all into the factory harness. Okay. Real simple to do. And that takes care of the magneto. That's the finalization on the magneto. That's all done. Ready to go on to the motor. Okay. So this is kind of a, um, a little touch-up video. Going through everything. And I got some very cool stuff to show you. All right, so here we got the voltage regulator. I made these two little brackets. You can make brackets however you want. You can make one big bracket. You can make two small. I have the two small ones so I can maneuver them and screw them onto the back here in the factory place of the original. See, the original one is wider and it mounts up here. I'm gonna drop this down because there is enough clearance on the bikes to do so. However, I'm using Phillips screws, factory screws, you know, from the bike, you know, to come off of the uh, clutch adjustment. And lock washes and lock nuts. Because when I tighten these down, I don't want this thing all loosey-goosey. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it onto the battery box first. Get it tightened up top. Up top here where it goes on the mounts. And then I'll tighten up the two bottom ones and be all good to go. So I already soldered the wires. This is, remember we did the continuity test. And we matched the yellow with the red to the yellow with the red. And then soldered the two wires together. So we got good connections on both of them. And then to finish this off. These are heat shrink tubes by the way. Not like the other ones. The other ones were insulating tubes. These are heat shrink tubes. Okay, very big, uh, very big difference. Okay. So let's see here. Take these. We want the heat sink tubes going about. Let's see how we can do these. So they're like kind of in the middle. Where I'm happy with them. Like that. Use the heat shrink, and now they're 100% done. So now I got my pigtail on. It's going to go into my factory wiring harness. The voltage regulator is all, sun, all set. This wire, red wire is going to go up to the battery, but I'm not sure what type of terminal I'm going to use yet. So we're going to leave that open. Okay? Real simple. This goes to the magneto. This goes to your battery. That's it, guys. That's it. That's all she wrote on that one. Okay. Now... For the part that you guys have all been waiting for. So I used to just a regular battery box. And that's where it's going to screw on to. Alright, so actually before we go into that part. We're going to go over this one more time. So I can explain to you guys a little more in depth. Okay. After you solder your wires. Slide those tubes that we saved from before. From the other... Um, charge coil Okay, slide them over the two two wires that you soldered and use a zip tie Double check your ground strap. Make sure it's tight On the front here. These are quarter inch um, In height not quarter inch in diameter you're gonna get this ones that are smaller than the screw and then you're going to use the um, The rotary tool to open them up. Okay to fit them properly all right, after you mount, after you get most of that cut out, you're going to screw this on back on with the two back bolts. You're going to take a pencil and draw your round, your uh, circumference lines. So let's see, pencil. We're going to pretend this pen is a pencil. And you're going to draw your lines on your magneto. And you're not going to, when you drill the holes for these to tap them, you're not going to go past that line. You're going to stay on this side of the line. Not this side of the line, but this side of the line. That's going to give you your air gap clearance. Okay? You want it as close to your line as possible. After that, that is nice and straight. Everything looks sweet and smooth and, and steady. The screws are tight. You're going to take the factory screws that you took out of here to hold on to this. And you're going to get them quarter inch longer. So what you're going to be buying is a 4 millimeter screw. That's a quarter inch longer than the ones you had on there. Okay. So. Alright. Now let's see if I can. Uh, what do you call it there? Get the. Uh, what you guys need. What you guys have been looking for. That wasn't that bad, but it's still considered, I consider it on a scale of 1 to 5 on the hard side. I, I consider it a 4, maybe even a 5, because there is a lot of grinding and there's a lot of precision work. So once again, if you're not comfortable with this, watch the video multiple times. Um, if you buy all the parts and pieces, I can do it for you for 50 bucks. Um, I don't mind, okay? 
and I mean it's it's a real nice it's a real nice unit I can't wait to put it in the bike and um, it's, it's gonna really add to the bike the features let's go over the features real quick okay what are the features to this well the features to this is the CDI side you have a smoother idle a lower idle um, better top end because there's no uh, point float um, it's more reliable it's not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road. It's going to, um, what do you call it there? It's going to give you better fuel economy. And the engine is going to have a more steady run pattern. So if you put the bike on a graph, you, you, points are kind of all over the place. CDI is not. It's direct. It's This is what it is. That's where it's shooting. That's where it's firing. Okay? So CDI is way better for many, many reasons. Better low end. Better fuel economy, better top end, um, let's see, better idle, better lower idle, lower, lower idle, and then you got your 12 volt part. What are the benefits to this? Well, now it's easy to buy lights. You could buy any light bulb you want, put it in your bike, it's going to work. Any light fixture you want, you want to put fancy light fixtures on your bike? There you go, go for it. You want to put a high beam, a, a real nice high beam in your bike and make your bike um, really noticeable? You can do that. And I did that headlight modification that came out just great. Uh, hold on one second. That's the KE100 headlight that I made. Okay, out of a Yamaha Virago. It's 12 volt. Okay, so, I mean, this is directly put on your bike, and this thing is going to be super bright. Another nice thing about this coil, this coil is designed for a four-wheeler that has electric start. Our bikes don't have electric start, so this has a higher, a higher, RP, um, higher current to it, more output. That's a nice feature to have. And then, when you're using LED lights, this thing could be great. So, you have that. You got the coil, no, the um, regulator. This right here is made up of, um, all we're doing is changing the coil out with the other coil, and we're changing the regulator with the other regulator. That's all we're changing. Um, and we adapted it so it fits your factory wiring harness. A um, couple of things. You know, you're going to have a little bit of a shopping list to buy at the store. Um, some of the questions I've gotten already are, Oh my God, Kevin, I need part numbers. I need, uh, what did you do? I mean, I've seen how you do it, but... And I'm going to have to watch these videos a hundred times again. But that's okay. That's why I put them up there for you guys. All right. So, as you can tell, I've been lacking on telling you guys something i guess something to show you guys i did all the math for you that's what i love about doing these videos to you guys i do all the math for you i'm like the nerd in class okay that sits there go hey give me your homework man i'll do it for you i'm that guy okay whoa what do we got here oh snap all right so let's see if i can focus you guys in i'm gonna leave this up so you guys can uh, see it for a few minutes here just try to get you on it a little bit better. Okay, we're going to go over this whole thing. Um, Alright, so what we have, we'll just go up this way right here with it. The charge coil. What is a charge coil? The, sorry about the, the camera moving a little bit. I'm doing this for you guys right here. I'm holding it. It's kind of hard to see. This is a charge coil. This is what charges the battery right here. This coil right here. That's the charge coil. And that is the Yamaha part number. Okay. Regulator. Regulators. That is the regulator. You can find these parts if you look up either a Badger, a Champ, or a Moto 4 80ccs. Those will come up. Okay. So I'm going to put this up like this a little bit here. You guys can see. 
feel free to copy this. If you guys, um, what do you call it there, email me. I'm going to take a photo of this tomorrow and I'm going to be able to email it to you guys if you guys need the part number. Okay. So let's go over what I what I got here. I got the drill to drill the holes on that um, on the charge coil. I have the tap needed to tap out the holes properly. Okay, so those are right there. What you're gonna need for a drill and tap. I have quantity. You're gonna need two of those quarter inch aluminum spaces. Two four millimeter screws at one inch and two four millimeter lock washers. Those are the longer screws. Remember, I told you you have to go to the hardware store and get them a quarter inch longer. There you go, right there. They're one inches. Okay, you're gonna need one zip tie, which I showed you where that goes. Your zip tie is gonna go at the bottom to hold your wiring. Okay, and on the other side. You're gonna need a heat shrink tube, okay? Um, I use I use different. You can get different types of tubes. If you don't care about the color of them, you can get black ones. Um, I try to color match mine, so you can do that too, okay? Um, so that's what I do. I, I color match them. Um, the quarter inch drill bit to drill out the holes in your brackets, right here. Now a quarter inch is very close to six millimeters, okay? These screws that are on here are six millimeters that go into your battery box are all six millimeters. So quarter inch is the closest thing to six millimeter. So then you're gonna need your quarter inch drill bit to drill those holes. You're gonna need two six millimeter lock nuts, two six millimeter lock washers, two six millimeter by seven sixteenths of an inch bolts, two six millimeters by half inch bolts, okay? So the two 7 16 bolts, I'm going to show you what those are for. I don't have them yet. I have to get them um, at the hardware store. But you can use, um, you can use a, battery, a battery screw. Okay. Now the 7 16 ones, I'm going to through the camera right here, guys. Oh, it holds the regulator to the, um, what do you call it, battery box. Okay, you have two of those, and then it lines up like that, then you tighten them down. The ones that are, um, the screws that are, uh, what do you call it there, half inch are the ones holding the regulator to those brackets you made. Okay, and that's it. And you can, you don't have to use screws, you can use bolts, but the bolts are a little hot because you stick them through and then you get tighten them on the other side. But, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know. There's really nothing nothing dramatic. You get your battery box right there, your, your power wire going up to your battery, and it's going down to your, um, what do you call it, your charging system. And that's it. And then I gave you guys, I made these brackets right here, that are at the bottom here, I'll show you right here, these two brackets. Um, that's the specifications for them, if you want to do exactly the way I did. Um, then you're going to need a three quarter inch flat stock, eighth inch thick, Six inches long, you have to cut that down. Um, use a hacksaw, however you want to do it. I used a, a, a grinding wheel and a cutter. And then you measure from the center hole to the center hole is one and a quarter. And then you measure from that center hole to that center hole, and that's three quarters. And these are all quarter inch holes. Okay? So I gave you guys your di di diagram. Da, 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 da. Can't talk. You can see how. They're offset. Sorry about the camera, guys. See how it's got the hole up top on one? It's closer to that one, and that one's longer. Okay. And that is because they're offset on this side. Okay. And I want to keep them level. So, once again, it's a real cut and dry thing. I gave you guys the specs right there, specifications. And I'm going to hide, I'm going to hold the screen up. Um, do it like this right here so you can pause it. There is the charge coil number up top and the regulator, regulator number. These are from a Yamaha. Okay, I'm going to, I should write on the Yamaha. Okay, for a Yamaha. 
Yamaha Badger Champ or Moto 4 80 cc's. It's got to be the 80 cc's, uh, 80 cc's guys. The 350 is a totally different charging system. Won't even, none of it will work on our bike. Um, this bracket right here that I made, these two brackets, you can make yours any way you want. Some people prefer a solid one, but there's a reason why I did two pieces of little, little stock. I'm trying to keep the weight of the bike down. And every ounce counts, okay? Um, I'm trying to make the bike light. And when I start adding big pieces of chunky metal to it, it actually increases the weight. I know it's small and insignificant, but the idea of a, of a sports bike is to be very light. And uh, you can you can use aluminum. I just, I'd rather use a steel on steel. You know what I mean? It's just me, how I am. But, um... Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I use that. So I use two pieces. And then if you look right, you know, you got the space in between. And that's all metal missing. You know, it's all metal. It's gone. I don't have to worry about what that weight. It just takes it off. Every little bit helps. So um, that's pretty much what I have for you guys for tonight. I'm sure you guys are going to have a ton of questions. By all means, please ask the questions. I don't mind. Um, once again, if you uh, wonder what I got. If you see it on there, just pause it. Hold it on there so you can get the part number. The drill and tap. It's very important you match these things right here, guys. Very important. Okay, drill and tap. Drill is number 30. And it, when you buy the tap, it'll tell you on the, um, on the tap what drill bit to get. Which is the nice thing. So that's the information off the tap. I use Irwin Bits, guys. I am not um, sponsored by these guys. I wish I was. <laughs> but I am not sponsored by them. But I use their product a lot. They they make easy outs, um, taps, drill bits, all kinds of cool things. Um, check them out. If you guys have a chance to go online, check out um, Irwin. They have a lot of stuff. And I always love how they give the specification. Like number 19. It tells you right here on it for... Um, for tap use, for use with taps, you know, and then it gives you down bottom here an icon of steel and um, pipe, okay, so these are good for those type of things, you know, you can get um, some that'll show you a board, it'll show you like, well, these are here all, these are all number 30, you know, for that type of stuff, but it'll tell you what they're for, which is really cool, so good quality product, and, um, so what if they're made in the U.S.? Well, it's made in China. But you know what? It's still a good product. So hopefully uh, they get on board and come over to the U.S. as well. But anyway, that's I did the homework for you guys. I promised you guys part numbers. And I promised you guys how to do it. So I came through. Next step is getting this on my Kawasaki KE-102 build. And uh, look how nice that looks, guys. Look how nice that is. Nice and uniform. Everything looks kind of factory in the back here, except for the zip tie. But I got that because I put the zip tie back there. Because the window here is so big, I don't want any wire coming through and getting caught up on my flywheel when it comes around. Okay, so make sure you use a zip tie and keep it nice and nice and tied back. Okay, it's very important. Um, yeah, you don't want that type of stuff going into your flywheel. Because there's really no clearance there. You know what I mean? So. But that's pretty much it. Ain't that, ain't that nice looking guys? Huh? So modern. Well anyway that's what I got for you guys tonight. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for all your support. 323 subscribers guys. Awesome. I love you guys. And I'm very honored and very happy to be able to do these type of projects for you. Um, I didn't do, you guys have seen my electrical videos, I'm sure, so you've seen how to solder. Um, I might do another soldering video. If you guys have any questions on that, I can, I can do a video on that. I just figured I'd cut off some time by just soldering the wires. <sighs> but, <clears throat> I left them without the heat shrink so I could show you how they look and all that. So, remember, these are the, um... Your two insulators that you took off your um, old coil that you removed. I know it looks like intimidating. Like you're looking at it like, wow, this thing is so much bigger. It's got three coils. 
and we're replacing it with one coil that does a bit a better job than these three. How is that even possible? It's the way they're wound. That's really what it comes down. It's the way they're wound. It's crazy, but it's true. You could have these rewound into a 12, but man, that'd be a mess. It's crazy how that works, though. One coil. This one coil puts out more than that does. It's insane. And it runs the headlight on the Moto 4 and all the other stuff, so there you go. It's crazy. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you guys have any questions, comments, by all means, please send them my way. Thank you very much. Have a good night.